Gretzky. The police arrived at the business's residence and found nothing. They then searched the I don't know if this is like there's blood here. Small apartment attached to the side of the establishment where the owner's son, Derek Zaretsky, lived. A single piece of physical evidence was discovered, giving authorities probable cause for arrest. They found a notepad in his bedside drawer with the names Shy Terry and The Hideous Baby crossed out. Forensics were unable to uncover any further clues linking him to the two victims. The only DNA found at the residence was of the suspect. From initial observation, the note would appear as exceedingly damning evidence when submitted in a court of law. Yet this type of averment would be easily invalidated by a defense team. The fact that the note was discovered nearly 24 hours after the crime was reported on the local news would give a defense advocate the grounds to argue that the suspect was simply transmitting what he saw on the TV into printed composition. This could have been done for a multitude of purposes, including reminding himself to keep a lookout for the missing child, or attending the funeral of the murder victim. Implausible, but not yeah, dude. You know, the hideous baby that was just murdered. Not impossible. The police would have been fully aware that they needed a full confession to avoid the indignation of future plea deals or the very real possibility of the suspect being found not guilty. A homicide investigation team will make every effort to gain as much information as possible on the suspect in the short window they have between their initial detainment and their interrogation. This will include cursory interviews with friends, family, and acquaintances, as well as social media activity and previous convictions. Derek had no criminal record and almost no social media presence. Yet through his father and co-workers' testimony, the police quickly discovered that the suspect was a highly reclusive individual with very few friends and suffered from bipolar type 2 disorder. Suspects with depressive disorders are more susceptible than the average person to the amiable disposition a detective will often put forward during a questioning procedure. The reasoning behind this concept is that the less endearment and affection an individual is customary to in their everyday life, the the more reactive they will be to those same sentiments inside an interrogation room. The heightened anxiety levels during a confrontational procedure can also influence their impressionability, making them predisposed to giving an investigator the information they want. The Crownist Pass Police Department only released part of the interrogation tape into the public domain at the request of multiple media outlets. The footage that was broadcast begins at the final stages of the interrogation, where the detective appears to have laid out most of the groundwork in terms of of building rapport and interconnection with the suspect. This is made evident by the breach of personal space, the soft-spoken tone of the officer, and the continuous reassurance given to the suspect with both verbal and non-verbal communication. Don't let her be alone. Be a hero for her. Be a hero, buddy. Let this community know that you're a hero, not a monster. alive Derek or is she dead is this Jim Smith it looks like Jim Smith it's really blurry but it do be looking like Jim Smith's hairline look at me is she alive she's not alive okay that's okay that's okay where is she buddy where is she? The devil made me turn her to ashes. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. It's okay. That's okay. Is it in the bush where you burnt her? Is that where she died? Yeah, it's in the bush. How'd you kill her? Okay. Okay. Just like he jokes me. Yeah. In an earlier part of the interrogation that wasn't released, the suspect described how the devil would choke him in his sleep every morning before he woke up. This is most likely what he is referring to. <laughs> Did she suffer? A little bit. A little bit? He told me to save myself in my own. He said I had the deeps in the soul searching. He said killing her would save you? So he says what he did. 
Derek continuously makes references to the messages he supposedly received from the devil in a cryptic manner. The detective acknowledges the statements, yet doesn't inquire further as to not alter the verbal path of his current admittance. If he ceases his ongoing avowal and goes off on a separate tangent, it may be hard to bring him back to his confessive dialogue. How did you choke her? I can't tell if this is like if he's faking it or if he actually is like if he actually was like schizophrenic or something. Now the reason why I uh, say this is because like the devil thing that he's talking about like people don't know this but like it could literally be gas. I know I've talked about this before. I'm not making a joke. Okay? But sometimes when you're really gassy and you fall asleep, like the feelings that you have, like you're being choked in your fucking uh, sleep. No, no gas, like not carbon monoxide. Like a fart. I swear to God, the gas like pushes your fucking heart or something. I don't know what it is. It's like hard to fucking breathe. It gets hard to breathe. And then you start, you feel like, Wow, I really fucked this up. I really fucked this up. But, like, he could also have, like, sleep apnea or something. Yeah, exactly. That is another thing. When you have sleep apnea or when you have indigestion, it, it literally feels like you can't breathe in your dreams and stuff. Well, I guess with sleep apnea, you don't even dream at all, but... Like, that's where a, a night terror like that comes from. You need to see a doctor? It doesn't happen to me regularly or at all. It, like, happens, like, once a year. If I, like, you know, eat like shit and then I just have, like, I don't know. It also used to happen to me with anxiety. In the beginning where I, uh, in the beginning of COVID, I was so anxious all the time that I would constantly be monitoring my breathing, like, can I take deep breaths? Can I still take deep breaths? And uh, and I feel like in the mornings, I, I would feel like I was uh, like dying, like choking in my dreams. And I kept dreaming that I couldn't breathe. And it, I think it was just like the anxiety from COVID. Fine now. Where did you get the shoelace? I don't know where I got them from. I just had in one of the pigs. Did you cut her before you choked her to death, or did you cut her after? I choked her first. So she was dead when you cut her? <coughs> yeah. Okay. She's not terrible. No. I, I, I understand, but you're doing a great job, so you should start to feel better. This should be healing for you. Did you... Should be. <laughs> Probably won't be. No. It Still will won't get me where I want to be. It's a start, but it's the first day of the rest of your life. What did you cut of hers? What was that? What did I cut her with? What did you cut of hers? Like you, like what part of her did you cut? It's just understand. It's not legs, arms. Tell me about it. Waist. You cut them off? I ate a little bit of her heart. You ate a bit of her heart? What the Just fuck? Try to strengthen mine. And how did that make you I feel? I drank a bit of her blood to try to get strengthen me. And how did that make you feel? A little bit stronger. Yeah. I spilled all over my To tell the truth to you. It did make me strong. It did? For a bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> what did the devil say when... Why did the devil tell you to kill Terry? I don't think this dude's faking it, bro. The terrible father. So what'd you use to kill Terry? Use a knife. A knife? Yeah. What kind of knife? 
describe it, please? Bro, people keep saying, yeah, he has bipolar. Okay, guys, do you not know what bipolar is? Like, like <laughs> some of you literally are just like, oh, he has bipolar. Oh, okay. I didn't realize when you're bipolar, you eat hearts, bro. Like, I'm just going to let you know, maybe you don't understand how uh, being bipolar works. But this is not how it works, okay? You have, like, manic states and you have depressive states. The more deadly part is actually the depressive state. What he's, re what he's talking about is, like, literally, uh, what he's talking about is, is way beyond uh, bipolar. It feels like... You know, it's some other shit's going on. Yeah, it's just a normal, unstrained knife. It's in the fire pit now. No, the manic states are the dangerous ones where you do fucked up shit. Oh, sorry. It's not the depressive states, right? It's the fuck. I was wrong. It's the manic state that's fucked up because you have a sense of like, you no longer have a sense of, of, uh, like being hurt. Where you just like, it's like a psychotic episode. Um, it could be, which which is really interesting because like, I feel like Dave, Lil Dicky's uh, show well, did a pretty decent over job of voices, talking about it. They go through. Where Gata has Gata is bipolar. Anyway, let's keep going. The same fire pit that you, you burned her? Yeah. Okay. You didn't burn her alive? You didn't? No. No, you told me you choked her first, right? Yeah, I choked her first. Went over to the, went through his side door. I heard a train go past. So I figured that was a good time to Check out the house. I had a flashlight on, my mask on. Dead Terry in the face, slash. And I grabbed him with some rope. Choked choke him. Choked him and then cut his throat. After Derek confessed to the double homicide of the father and daughter, he then led officers to a campsite in Blairmore where he burned the toddler's body in a fire pit. Yeah, it's... Okay, so we'll get out. We'll talk about it. What the fuck? I'll get your door and stuff. Here. Yeah. So what did, where did you take Haley? Um, over here. Whereabouts? Can you just show me? Like, just take me right there. No, this was moved. This was moved? This was... Damn, bro. Homies had fucking... Lunches and shit on there since then. That's crazy, dude. You're like having a fucking family gathering. Crazy. Where it was. You don't need to move it, but. It's right here. So you had Haley right here? Okay, so what did you do? There, yeah. What did you do first? I started stuck stuck in the fire pile with books. A bunch of books till I got the fire decently going and put some wood on it. Then I choked her over there. Where? Over there, about you just take me to the spot? He was charged with two counts of first degree murder and one count of indignity to a human body in relation to Haley's death. He made his first court appearance seven days later where two consecutive psychiatric assessments were ordered to see if he was mentally suitable to undergo further legal proceedings. On November the 26th of 2015, he was deemed fit to stand trial. Several months later, while Derek was awaiting his next court date, DNA analysis linked him to the body of 69-year-old Hannah Mekatek, 
who was found in her mobile home in Alta, bludgeoned and stabbed to death just five days prior to the killings of Terry and Haley. He immediately confessed to her murder, according to reports, and told the police that it was a spur-of-the-moment thing, and he chose her because he didn't think anyone would miss her. He remained in a high-security unit of the Lethbridge Correctional Center until the start of his trial on June 7, 2017. Why would he possibly plead not guilty to these three murders? And, and after sitting in that courtroom for so long, you have a theory on that. Yeah, I do. And, and I do have to reiterate that it is my personal theory. Um, but it's my perception that he wanted these details aired. And that is why he pleaded not guilty, because if he had pleaded guilty, it, none of these details would have come out. Um, so what the jury heard was that in his apartment, they found a book called The Serial Book of Serial Killers. Uh, and in his backpack, they found pages torn from that book. Um, upon further investigation on my own part, I realized that the, uh, the story detailed in, on those pages torn out was the story of Edward Gain, who was a murderer uh, in the early, earlier 1900s. And what he did has inspired uh, horror movies such as Psycho and Silence of the Lambs. Um, so as far as I can tell from what I've seen and heard throughout this trial, imitation was really uh, his motive for all of this and um, notoriety was his goal in pleading not guilty. The Crown submitted that all the talk of the devil and God making him commit the crimes was Derek consciously setting the groundwork for a potential insanity defense and that the murders of Terry and Haley were meticulously planned, right down to the location of where he destroyed the child's body. They also argued that the killing of Hannah Mechatek was a practice run for the double homicide that followed and that all three of the victims were mere pawns in the defendant's thrill-killing venture once they became known to him through his father's dry clean. I'm sorry, bro. He was fucking faking it. Cleaning business. I feel like anytime somebody says, like, the devil made me do it, it's like an automatic self-report. You know what I mean? Anytime someone's like, oh, yeah, oh, shit, dude, oh, fuck, the, the devil made me do it. It's like, oh, dude, you're straight up just saying this because you want to do an insanity plea. The prosecutor also stated that a sexual motive behind the child's murder was a very likely possibility, yet couldn't be proven by a medical examiner due to the amount of damage done to her body. A jury found him guilty on all charges after 21 days and rendered him a life sentence without the possibility of parole for 75 years. He currently resides at the Maximum Security Edmonton Institution in southern Alberta. He is yet to receive a single visit from a friend or family member. From Australian county towns to schools in Ireland and cities across the United States, the Catholic Church has faced an avalanche of child abuse.